Hi, I'm Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you my top 10 of 2021. So these are fragrances that were purchased during this year, uh, and they all have become absolute loves. Absolute loves. So I think they were all purchased in 2021. Purchased or given, that kind of thing. So I'm excited to get started. But before I do, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And uh, I'd really love to get to uh, 10,000 over the next year. So help me do that. Not quite sure how that happens, but let's make it happen, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into this now. I put it in uh, order, so my least favorite, they're all favorites, uh, absolutely all favorites. But I put in, uh, I, I'm gonna start with number 10 and work my way up to the number one of 2021. The number one of 2021, yeah. So uh, let's just get started. The first one is my beloved Tom Ford Noir Perfume coming in at number 10. Now, um, maybe you're shocked at how low this one is. Uh, I put it that low because as much as I love it, um, I just haven't worn it that often. There's just not been the occasions to wear this fragrance. So I haven't worn it near as much as I had hoped. Uh, that just doesn't change the fact that it's just stunning. It smells sweet. It's a little spicy, super sensual and sexy. Um, yeah, it smells like a black tie event and even the bottle looks that way. Very luxurious smelling fragrance. Smells rich, smells luxe. I love it. So uh, I hope to use it a little bit more in 2022 for sure, because I've, I think, worn it twice. Just not going out much, but this one is definitely way up there as far as a great fragrance. Number nine for my top 10 of 21 is kind of a surprise to me because I've never really been into uh, super citrusy or fresh fragrances, but I found that this summer, this summer was so hot uh, so I found myself reaching for more freshies uh, than I had ever done before in the past. So uh, this one got a ton of wear and I absolutely enjoy wearing that and that is Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Love is Love. So I'm not as crazy about the original Light Blue, um, but this one, this one I just love. The longevity on this one isn't great, uh, but Love is Love what sets it apart for me is you still get that citrus, but it's got this gorgeous raspberry uh, note in it, uh, which I do pick up. It smells a little bit like a raspberry sorbet to me. And I just, uh, I found that when it was super duper hot, this was my absolute go-to. So light blue, love is love by Dolce & Gabbana. Coming in at number eight is Velvet Vanilla by Mansara. Now this one, uh, I have worn it a bit, but it is so potent. Like I've worn this one quite a lot, but it is so potent that you don't need much sprays. So there's not much of a dent, but there is a dent in there. Um, this one is just, it, it, it somehow is comforting to me. I bought it at the beginning of this year. The first sniff of this, like I did an unboxing video, I'll maybe put up a reaction. I just got Velvet Vin Vanilla in uh, by Mansara. Um, I got it off of fragranceby.ca for like a steal of a deal. So I thought I'd give it a try and thought I'd let you guys experience the first sniff with me. I've never smelled this one before. <laughs> we'll see. I was like really not thrilled with this one uh, to begin with, like wasn't sure about the greenness in there, but I just find this one so, so comforting. It's that bubblegum tuberose, uh, and then for me, it dries down to kind of a bit vanilla buttercream icing. I've said that before. I don't find this one particularly sexy, but if you're wanting like a sweeter kind of uplifting fragrance for fall and winter especially, uh, this one really, it's nice and strong, cuts through any kind of weather, uh, lasts forever, and I just think it's a, a great fragrance to have. It's girl. 
girly, it's sweet, it's delicious, and for me, for whatever reason, super comforting. So Velvet Vanilla, definitely, definitely a great fragrance. Now number seven on my top 10 for 21 is Scandal à Paris. Now I, I could have easily put in So Scandal as well, uh, but lately this, this one just beat it out. So uh, I decided to put this one in. Um, I, I'm in love with this one. Now I'm not overly crazy about some honeys. So the honey in, in the original Scandal, not a fan. Uh, I love the opening. It smells so incredible and I'm just like, you know, sniffing myself away and then all of a sudden somehow it turns into cat pee on me. Like it just smells like pee. It's just no good. So honey, that honey, that honey just goes completely nasty on me. However, Scandala Perry still has the honey note. Uh, combined with jasmine and I believe there's pear in this so it's a little bit fresher my husband really likes this fragrance I think it's super sexy uh, it lasts a decent amount of time on my skin but for me it's definitely more wearable than the original scandal which would be <clears throat> like it's quite a powerhouse fragrance and it's kind of more of an evening fragrance if you ask me this one you can wear during the day and evening um and yeah i just really enjoy this one i found i've been reaching for it even in the winter time just because i love I, like i feel like that that honey pear jasmine combination is super addictive so i have uh like i i can't stop snipping this one <laughs> Coming in at number six, you know, it, I almost feel guilty saying like number 10, number nine, because they're all so amazing. But coming in at number six is Ellie Saab Royal. Now this fragrance, uh, I think it's one of my lifers, honestly. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's potent. I've put a pretty decent dent in it. Um, this one is so potent. Uh, what you get primarily is orange, rose, and some sort of spicy quality in here. So um, it smells like there's some spices. It doesn't smell overtly like cinnamon or nutmeg, cardamom, that kind of thing. But the orange and rose combine together. There's a tartness, a sweetness, and then somehow a spiciness. It makes me think of some sort of fancy Middle Eastern garden and walking in a flowy gown uh, with a tiger. <laughs> I don't know why, but like Princess Jasmine wears this. Like definitely Princess Jasmine from the Disney show. Uh, she definitely wears this. So it's powerful. It smells, it smells regal. Uh, and I just, I'm in love with it. Um, it's quite sweet. Uh, and although it's floral, like if you like rose, this is definitely definitely want to check out. I think there's orange blossom and different things like that in this as well, but primarily you're getting that orange and that rose and um, yeah, it I, it's stunning. In fact, when I smelt this, I'd already sprayed myself with a different perfume, but when I smelt this, I wanted to spray myself with it because it's just so good. So Ellie Saab Royal. So in fifth spot is kind of a more sexy fragrance, slightly skanky. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> if you've been watching for a while, especially this fall, my guess is you know which one's coming. Ylang Ylang Espresso by Floral Street. This fragrance is definitely not for the faint of heart. I can see many people not liking this at all. In fact, I think it gets like a 2.5 out of 10 on Sephora. So it is not a fan favorite, but it is a Maria favorite. <laughs> so this one is, it's... Uh, it's technically considered a gourmand. It's got uh, notes of coffee. There's tiramisu, but there's also ylang ylang in there. And it smells very similar. If you've smelt Cafe Tuberosa by Atelier Cologne, to me, this one is really similar to that. So if you like that fragrance, you may like this one. In the opening, you get kind of a really strong coffee, black coffee, uh, espresso, smelling uh, coffee. So super strong, uh, dark roast kind of coffee uh, paired with almost like it smells like lipstick and leather. Uh, there's a little bit of a cigarette vibe to this too. So if you like that cigarette kind of a cord, you may really enjoy this one. 
uh, as it dries down that starts to dissipate and you get a really beautiful kind of uh, a, a gourmand. So the florals kind of back off and you're left with kind of this coffee tiramisu feel. The coffee kind of stays the whole entire time but it kind of starts to play a little bit of a less role uh, and then you get these sweet kind of vanillic gourmands. So um, yeah, I find this one really sexy. I don't know, it just smells kind of a little bit dirty and bad, but in, in the dirty and bad in the best possible way, it's, it's just really good. So I love it. Uh, I don't wear it that often because I don't want to uh, accost people's nasal senses. <laughs> Yeah, like going out and about, like I'd be scared to wear this one. I wear it more for me because I think it may be off-putting to people. Like when my mom smelt it, she literally went Ugh! like that. Like it's that polarizing. So Ylang uh, Ylang Espresso, definitely try to get your nose on this one because it's it's an experience. It's an experience whether you love it or hate it. So coming in at number four, this fragrance is similar to me to Royal. It's regal, it's it's feminine, it's powerful, and I absolutely love it. And it is First Kiss by Be Layered. Now this is an inspired version of Delina by Parfums de Marly, uh, which I also want in my collection and I want Parf uh, Delina exclusive at some point. But I just think that this is a gorgeous scent. Uh, when I wear it, I get compliments. Uh, it's a super uh, powerful, uh, like it has excellent projection and sillage. And I like the smoky quality in this one. So this one, it's kind of a tart rose fragrance again. Uh, sweetness, there's, I believe, lychee and rhubarb in there. So there's a bit of a, what comes across to me as a celery note, which doesn't sound so great. Uh, but somehow blended with the sweetness of the rose and everything that's going on here. I just find this one so intoxicating. It's just beautiful. Because I have this one, I'm not going to spring for Delina. Once this is gone, I'm getting Delina for sure. <laughs> but uh, the Be Layered version, excellent. The longevity is excellent. I put this on in the morning. I can smell it at night. If it's on my clothes, it's on there till I wash them. So this is a great fragrance and it's also affordable. So First Kiss by Be Layered. Now number three for my top 10 of 21 is Terracotta by Guerlain. Now this was a shock to me because uh, when I first smelt this, I thought it kind of smells like popcorn to me. Like that was the vibe I got out of it. And indeed there is a buttery kind of a little bit of an oily quality. It reminds me a little bit of Moroccan oil if you've ever smelt that. This is just a beautiful blended, beautifully blended fragrance. Um, I love the bottle, like the front of the bottle, I just think is gorgeous. I don't like the fact that they didn't put a sticker on this side and you can see the glue, that bugs me. But uh, the fragrance itself is, it just smells like summer to me now. Um, I loved wearing this one. I found that I was uh, like so addicted to it. Like I was always wanting to put it on. Like I would have worn this daily if I didn't want to kind of wear my other fragrances and get all, give all of them a chance to be used. But this fragrance out of all the kind of beachy, uh, like I'm not talking sunscreen, but just the holiday vibes, like I'm thinking Holidays by Mansara or Bronze Goddess. To me, this trumps all of them. I, I think it's beautiful and for a floral, for a summer floral, I don't find this one cloying at all and it just smells so rich and luxurious like it smells sophisticated it smells like a sophisticated beach <laughs> or a sophisticated holiday like the woman that wears this she has she wears like a, a a gorgeous bathing suit and she's got kind of a plunging flowy uh you know over thing and high heels and she probably wears lots of gold and she has a very large sunglasses and a very large hat. She's got butlers. She spends about two months vacationing in the south of France, right on the ocean, in her fancy, luxurious, I don't know if it's a hotel or if she owns the property, it's probably a castle, but she smells like this in the summer and I want to smell like that too. <laughs> so this one is 
it, it, it's definitely my favorite. My favorite summer fragrance if I want to smell sophisticated and classy. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, this is the one I reach for. So this is number three. We're down to two fragrances. I'm so excited about these two. In number two spot is L'Entredi by Givenchy. Um, like I, I could inhale this fragrance all day. Um, it's so beautiful. It's got pear and tuberose again, uh, as opposed to a velvet vanilla that is super kind of sweet and almost smells like icing. This one, the pear is juicy and uplifting, but of course you still have that bubble gummy uh, type tuberose paired with the vanilla. So it's still very sweet. Um, I, I so enjoy this fragrance. I enjoy the whole entire L'Entre D line. But this is definitely my favorite out of all of them. Uh, again, the, the longevity of this one. If I put it on, it's going to last me all day. Projection and sillage lasts about four hours, I would say. Uh, and and it, it's not like it becomes a skin scent. Like you'll still enjoy your scent bubble, but it gets a little bit closer. Um, I just really enjoy this one. I find it uplifting. I find it classy. Uh, but a little bit intoxicating at the same time. So this one could be worn day or, or night. Uh, yeah, it's just definitely one of my favorites of all time. Can any of you guys guess what number one is? I bet you you can't. I, I, I like, I, I would be shocked if you knew which one was number one. Uh, but I can't wait to share it with you. And it is Trisardi's Donna. Now, first of all, I love this bottle. I think it's gorgeous. The cap has engraving on the top. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I like the sound that it makes when I click it into place. I'm not sure why, but I love that. Uh, but what I love even more is the fragrance. This was a blind buy and it was such a successful purchase. I'm so, so glad that I found this one. This one opens with lemon and yuzu. I would I primarily wear this in the spring and the summer uh, just because it's such a, a bright citrus but unlike this one that is kind of more of a, a a little bit of a sharper citrus with some fruit this one is paired with uh, some beautiful florals and uh, it smells to me uh, like a lemon curd or uh, the you know pie filling kind of like that so although it's quite tart uh, it's got a creamy component to it, uh, like a custardy type component, uh, so it's not too sharp or citrus. So it's so beautifully balanced with the sweet notes that are in this fragrance. So I love wearing this one. I find it extremely uh, invigorating. It's so, so great in the spring and summer, and it's it does smell classy. Uh, the longevity on this one is pretty decent. Uh, for a citrus so you're gonna get five or six hours out of this one uh, but yeah every time I put this one on it was it was so enjoyable and it's one of those fragrances where you go and then you feel invigorated so this one is a fun one to wear and um, it's one that you could wear to the office uh, you could wear it uh, yeah you could wear this year round to the office it certainly is inoffensive and it's just it's just a pretty feminine, beautiful, uh, kind of citrusy, like lemony type fragrance, but still, uh, like I said, blended with that creaminess uh, so that it's somehow a little bit more palatable. I find with citruses, like they can smell too zingy. So this is definitely tart and lemony. Like it makes my mouth water a little bit, but the creaminess just kind of undergirds that lemon. The lemon and the yuzu is definitely the star of the show. So Trisardi Donna, love, love, love. And that's it. That's my top 10 for 2021. What is your top 10 for 2021? I love each one of these fragrances. Like they're just, they, I, I yeah, they're just awesome. And when I think about them too, what I find like when I go through something like this is it makes me think of different times that were happy during the year. So uh, I remember getting this one and putting it on in the winter time and just feeling so cozy. Oh, there's so many more like as I start thinking about it that I'd love to have added to this, this uh, list, but I wanted to keep it to 10. 
Uh, but like, yeah, this wearing it in the summer and those hot summer days and evenings. So beautiful. So, so many beautiful fragrances here. Tell me what your favorite fragrances uh, for 2021 were, were. I would love to know. To wrap up, I just want to tell you guys to have an amazing New Year's celebration, whether you're going out, staying at home with family and friends. Uh, I hope that you bring in the new year in a way that's memorable and enjoyable for yourself and your loved ones. And as you go into this year, I just want to remind you to cut yourself some slack. It's been a rough couple of years. Like, it's been tough. Lots of blocked goals uh, due to our global situation. Uh, you know, there's the just the heaviness of living in, in the situations that we're living in. But then there's also been a lot of loss for people over the past uh, couple of years. So going into 20. 22 so often like we can experience all these knocks and then what ends up happening is we feel like we don't even want to hope for the future oh what's the point in making plans what's the point in this well i want to give you some hope there's something beyond our plan making there's something beyond our circumstances and it's called richness and relationships it's 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 about relationship and connection that's what actually brings uh, richness in life so you know we can go and we can do all sorts of things and I've I've been blessed enough to experience lots of different things and had uh, lots of different successes or milestones in my life where I went yes I wanted to do that I accomplished it but it's empty in comparison to uh, cultivating relationships with the people that that God has put in my life so cultivating healthy relationships loving well, loving myself well, enjoying the present with the people that are in my life, that's what brings richness in life. When I think about anything that has brought me joy, and, and I don't mean just fleeting happiness, I mean this joy where you feel this deep satisfaction. It's, it's, uh, it's way richer than happiness. Whenever I've experienced moments of joy, it's with my loved ones. It's, it's savoring those moments with loved ones. That's what really, really matters. And that's what's going to bring richness, joy, contentment. It's not our stuff, our accomplishments, any of that. I guess as well, uh, when you're cutting yourself some slack, cut, cut those around you some slack as well. Because it's been tough for everybody. So, you know, if you're cutting yourself some slack, which I hope that you do, when you're out and about, when you're dealing with other people, even friends and family that can be trying, uh, cut them some slack because they've had a hard year too. <laughs> so that's my pep talk. You are amazing. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for this year on YouTube and I look forward to so much more in 2022. Have an amazing week. And we'll talk to you soon.